Wait, chat, there's a game I want to try real quick. One of my uh, mods recommended it, I think. I'm about to give somebody 25 to live. Chad, have y'all heard of this game? Banana Republic? Isn't that a clothing brand? Slay. Wait. Okay, I'm messing with the style. You have a e you have a mail. Oh my name? Okay. Is this one of the games gonna show my IP, bro? Mamadi with the 20 gifted W Mamadi with the 20 gifted W Mamadi Ooh, stinky W Mamadi with the 20 gifted Appreciate you, Mamadi I was appointed as judge Alright, bet Can y'all get sued for this, by the way? Banana Republic is a clothing brand Guilty. I can tell by looking at you. Wait, wait a minute. Your Honor, first of all, as the ministry, we wish you success in your new position. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We wanted to remind you of the details that are important for you to make a correct judgment. You can find the evidence. Oh, I'm getting. That's not my neighbor vibes. You can find the evidence in the evidence file. Okay. The case file includes the content of the case and the information of the defendants. I'm giving everybody 25 to life. You can ask some questions to the defendant by clicking the microphone. <laughs> can access some digital evidence such as camera footage or audio recordings okay okay the law book contains I don't need that I am the law bet <coughs> new judge in town judge Judy you better watch out <clears throat> What'd you do? The case file. His name is James Adley. He's 28. Let's see what he did, chat. Let's see. Let's see. James Adley, who was seen by the patrolling police at 2 a.m. I don't know if it's 2 a.m. Let me not judge uh, too quick. He was seen at 2. Was it 2 a.m. or 2 p.m.? This is crucial context. What is it? He's 26. Oh my goodness, he is. My bad. It's a.m. He was seen at 2 a.m. After the specified restriction time of... Wait, he was out past curfew? Curfew? 
it was around 150 and I wasn't feeling well. At that moment, I forgot that there were restrictions and I was just wandering around. I saw the police while they... Cough in my courtroom again! Who's coughing? Wait, you have the possibility of being assassinated? Wait, what? No. What? <clears throat> anyway. So, long story short, chat. He was out past curfew, right? Um, there's no evidence. He was just out past curfew. Is there any digital evidence? No digital e evidence. Uh, email. Shop. Oh, that's cute. Um, so that's all we got. <coughs> Next person to cough in this courtroom's getting a death penalty. You understand me? Go to the law. Huh. What would this be under, chat? What would this even be under? Yo, you got anything to say? Why didn't you allow the police to write a fine, James? Because I thought I was right and they didn't give me a... Because I thought I was right and they didn't give me a chance to explain. I didn't want it to come to this. Well, James, if you didn't want it to come to this, you would have let him write you a fine and you wouldn't have resisted. Yo, Desi with the five. In your statement, you said you didn't feel well during the night. Why didn't you call an ant? Because that's, ex why am I asking this? That's expensive. But yeah, why didn't you call an ambulance, James? As I said, Your Honor, the first thing that came to my mind at that moment was to go out, and while I was doing it, I didn't think of the details. Is that right? Yo, Big Booty Brett with the five gifted... Yo, Chimmy with the 10. Hmm. This seems like, I don't know. This isn't like a big deal. Right. Chat, vote on the poll. That's what I was thinking. He didn't come in here with an attitude. He came in here straight up. You know, he wasn't trying to do too much. He was just explaining his side. You know. You're good to go, sir.
Uh, what, what, what is, what does this mean? What is this? Is this my family? Dolores! with a criminal record will now be given increased penalties so pretty much if I hear that you like ran a stop sign you're getting death penalty if you have a criminal record that sounds pretty that sounds pretty logical to me right chat W judge case number two Let's see what we got. Axel Brendan. I should arrest you for that first name. He has a criminal record! What are his charges? Possession slash carrying of drugs. Okay, what are we talking? A small amount of drugs were found on the person named Axel Brendan, who was subjected to an identity check by the police in the evening as a result of his body search. As a result of the identity scan, it was seen that the person had been tried and acquitted twice before on charges of possession. <sighs> As a result of, subsequent, of the subsequent investigations, no evidence was found on the person named Axel Brennan was involved in drug dealing. I admit that I was care. Oh, this is, his, this is his statement, Chad. This is his statement. I admit that I was care that I carry the substance, but I only use it in my own environment and when I am alone to calm my mind. I have not harmed anyone and never will. I will not use this substance from now on. Is that so, Axel? I found cocaine in your room! Cocaine! Well, 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 Brandon. Well, 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 Brandon. Cocaine, huh? <coughs> How much is five milligrams, Chad? How much are we talking? Is that bad? Somebody just said only five milligrams LMAO. Okay, Mr. Drug Lord, explain to us how many five milligrams is. Sorry, we don't do drugs in here, buddy. Since you're the drug guy. Huh. Well, Brandon. Um, let's see here. Narcotic. Oh, man. Possession of carrying drugs sentenced 10 months public service. Aggravated sentence, 18 months public service and a $5,000 fine. So I wouldn't say it's aggravated. I would say that it's a regular. We got any digital evidence? No. Okay. Um, Axel, were you going to sell this stuff before you got caught in the ID check? 
No, Your Honor. I was just on my way home and suddenly I saw the police checking IDs. I wanted to change direction, but I was already on their radar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where did you get this stuff? Great question, Judge Case! I get it through a friend. I don't know from whom he gets it. What's your friend's name? Hmm? Mm. Mm. We gonna get him to snitch! We're gonna get him to snitch! Is the person you call my friend your close friend? No, Your Honor. He is someone I met at a bar called Grand Pub a month ago. I don't know him personally. Uh-huh. Hmm. Look here, Brandon. You were carrying some cocaina. So I can't let you off scot-free, all right? And you also do have a criminal record. Ten months community service. W judge. Hey, hey, W judge, chat. W judge. Hey, Dolores. <coughs> it's been a long day, Dolores. I'm going to sleep. Jason Hamstred. No criminal record. Charges. Assassination! During the night, two. During the night, Freddie Cole, CEO of Glenswick, was found dead in the trunk of his car. It has been determined that the CCT, CCT, the CCTV camera covering the area where the incident took place was not working. Of course it wasn't. Of course it wasn't working, Chad. Of course, why would it be? Security guard Jason Hamstrid, who was the only employee in the company at the time of the incident, became a suspect and was taken into custody. Here's his statement. On the evening of the incident, only three hours had passed since I started to work. While I was doing my routine hourly patrol, I saw Mr. Coles' vehicle, but... The open trunk of the vehicle caught my attention. When I approached the vehicle, I saw Mr. Colsey's lifeless body in the trunk. What caught my attention about the body was that it had a red rose on it. Afterwards, I immediately notified the police.
Wait, what? Oh! A device. In order to ensure the security. Okay. We designed the passwords on this device that only you can solve them. Remember, if you try to open it three times before the green light turns on, it will destroy it. Okay. GG. Wait, how do I do this? the evidence the rope this looks like something agent 47 would use red rose was found on the body no digital evidence How do you think the killer entered the car park undetected without an ID card? <coughs> I can't find any answer to that, Your Honor. The doors have never been used in the system since I started my shift. Ooh, that's not good. You telling me you don't have an answer is not looking good for you, Jason. Chad, it's not looking good for Jason. have a problem with the CEO of the company? Did you know him well? Glenswick is a really big company. I know them by name and I started three months ago. I only interviewed with the recruitment department and I had no problems with him. Mr. Jason Hamstrid, in the case of the assassination of the CEO of your company, the jury finds you not guilty. Not guilty! Not guilty! Why? I'll tell you why. that was on the body explain to me why the security guard would kill him and put the rose down you for a hundred dollars for her school fees do you accept a hundred dollars loser 
Uh oh. We have two individuals! Bob Isaac. Thirty four auto theft. The vehicle was stolen while parked in a parking lot opposite to the neighborhood of Lehman Diaz, where, where Lehman Diaz. Are you Lehman Diaz? Following the denunciation, W reader dude, wow. On the morning of the night the vehicle was thought to have been stolen, the license plate was traced. The vehicle was turned over the same morning and as, as a result of the searches. Criminal record too, by the way. Criminal record. A package containing cigar scissors was found in the vehicle. Apart from this, no additional findings were found. Details. As a result of the identity check, the person inside the vehicle was determined to be Bob Isaac Groove. Bro just got doxxed first, middle, and last. Nicknamed Big. <laughs> I can relate to that. Known as a former car thief, huh? Layman Diaz. We went to our summer house in Counting Village with my car for two days and as a, fam as a family over the weekend. At the end of the second day, I think I forgot to lock my car because I was tired from the road. There is a possibility that the person who stole it also took advantage of this. Here's the statement from Bob Isaac Big Groove. Okay. On the morning of the day the car was thought to have been stolen, a longtime friend of mine, Colonel Glenn, called me and said he had urgent business. He asked me to take his package to a place called Party Time. I thought it was urgent, so I went quickly with Colonel Glenn. To, I went quickly to Colonel Glenn's house. He gave me the car key and a piece of paper with the address that I thought was to take the package. Likely story. Were you the night that the car was stolen? That night I was sitting in a place called Pepsi's with my girlfriend. Before it was too late at night, I dropped her off at her house and went to my home. I fell asleep shortly after. In the morning, I woke up to Colonel's call. That's Colonel, eh? That's how you say that. Ain't that how you spell Colonel? No, I'm gonna still call him Colonel anyway. When was your last conversation with Colonel Glenn? It had been almost six months since we last spoke to... Since we? Who's we? Also, it's been a long time since I left these jobs. I am now a, in a regular... I am now in a regular life and regular relationship. I am not guilty. Now we're talking to Colonel. 
When did you meet with Bob Isaac Groove? I've known Bob for over 20 years and he is a dear friend. Mr. Groove says you have you gave him a stolen vehicle, delivered a package, and asked him to take it wherever he wanted. Is this true? This has nothing to do with me. The last time I met Bob was six months ago. Bob has slandered me. GG. I'm him. Oh. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We have a fingerprint! Two, one, two, three, one, four. Two, one, two, three, one, six. Two, one, two. Mr. Colonel Green, this isn't looking good for you. <coughs> oh? Oh? No facial recognition? The fingerprint alone. The fingerprint alone is enough for me. Right? That's Jesus. His fingerprint is literally in the car. So you see here, Mr. Mr. Colonel Glenn, we have found cigar cutters in the stolen vehicle with your fingerprints on them, which puts you in the stolen vehicle, puts you at the scene of the crime, okay? So that being said, Mr. Colonel Glenn, I don't take... <sighs> Things like pe people's per personal property, which they have worked hard for, being stolen from them outside of their home when they're on a vacation. So that being said, Mr. Colonel Glenn, you will be serving five years in the penitentiary for first degree car theft. In the case of Bob Isaac Groove, I see that you were set up. So you will be having a no guilty charge. Not guilty. Chat W Judge, man. He's lucky I didn't give him 10 years. I wanna do one more, I wanna do one more. One more chat, let's go, lock in. getting serious we got a whole family in here uh oh we have a family dispute 
Uh oh, chat. We got a family dispute. Diaz Robin, Clara Robin versus Ezekiel Robin and Ben Robin. Hmm. Hmm. The defendant's Ben Robin, the plaintiff is Diaz. The situation who will take the custody of a 12 year old. Ooh, man. Custody. No, my water. I got it. I'm good. <sighs> ben Robin Diaz Robin recently divorced. Okay, so these are the parents on the ends. These are the two kids who they're trying to get custody of. Lock in, chat. A custody case was failed by Diaz Robin, the mother of the children, for the custody of their children, Ezekiel and Clara. As a result of the divorce, the mother has a certain amount of alimony that she demands from the father. Are you sad that your parents are divorced? Wow! Oh! Oh! So, do you want to live with your mom? So, do you want to live with your mom or your dad? Would you prefer? Bro's getting fried over here. This dude's getting fried right now. Now we're asking her the same thing. Crazy question from Judge Case when it has to be asked. Crazy question, but it had to be asked. Chat, listen. <coughs> this is the court of law. St hey. <laughs> Chat, it had to be asked, man. It had to be. Another tough question, but it has to be asked.
So what we have here, the son doubled, tripled down on the fact that him and his sister should go with the mom. <coughs> Who would I choose? From what I'm hearing, I would have to choose the mom because the son was adamant for some reason. No, I mean an IRL. There's no way you're asking that, Mom. Why are you trolling? <sighs> Chat, what are we thinking? This is tough. Look at shopping history. No, that's not that's not shopping history. That's just a shop for the thing. I wish I could talk to the dad. Mom, why are you instigating? I might go bottom. Hold on. Oh, so you're watching the stream and dad's not? Okay, I'm going with mom then. Okay, chat, here's our options. Here's our options. Giving custody of both children to the mother. Custody of both children to the father. Giving the son to the father and the daughter to the mother. That's not what they want. Both children were adamant about not being separated from one another. The only thing besides that that was said was that the son tripled down that they should go with the mother. So due to all of the information that we have consumed on this case... I feel like we have to give custody to the mother of both children. Because doing anything else would go against everyone's wishes. It ain't easy being a judge, Chad. It ain't easy. Chad, it ain't easy. Do I look you to do one more before we play DTI? Should I? Bro, this game's fire. Why haven't we played this before? Give me like a give me like a crazy like somebody like ate somebody case right here. Let's do another one. Okay, let's see what we have here. Chat, let's see what we have here. James Redlow, 51 male. Charges of assassination. Lock in. Lock 
lock in. Chat, remember, after we play Dress to Impress, we're playing the new 616 game. I think I'm in the game again, too. All right. Details of assassination charge. In the morning, a person named Amanda Sylvia, who was jogging in a forested area near the highway, came across the lifeless body of a person named Francis Crims while jogging. It has been determined that the CCTV camera covering the area where the incident took place was not working. <coughs> he has a criminal record as well, Chad. Keep that in the back of your mind. He has a criminal record. According to the autopsy report, it was understood that he died as a result of prolonged asphyxiation without any signs of impact on his body. According to the allegations, the last person the deceased was in contact with was James Redlow, a member of, a member of the board of directors of Karen and Wells. Board of directors, huh? Pretty high-ranking position, sir. Why'd you kill him? Sorry, I forgot I wasn't a logger. I'm a judge. My bad. Yo, D Honey with 50 gifted. Give me some W's for D Honey with the 50 gifted. Chat W D Honey with the 50 gifted subs. Appreciate you, D Honey. W D Honey, chat. Appreciate you. Thank you. <clears throat> Here's the statement from Mr. James Redlow. That night we left the company together. We went to the bar called Lose Drop with his vehicle. After staying there for about one hour, he dropped me off at my home. Did he? Or did you drop his body in the middle of the woods after you asphyxiated him to death, huh? What is it, James? I don't know what he did after that or where he went. Francis and I were good friends. While sitting at the bar, I saw him trouble. But no matter how much I insisted, he did not say anything. Yo, Tajar with the five. He just said that there was something wrong in his, his life these days and no matter what he did, he couldn't change things. That's all I can say. I am so sorry for the loss of a close friend. Are you, James? Are you sorry? Because this sentence right here isn't speaking to me well, chat. I am so sorry for the loss of a close friend. That's like you're apologizing for something, James. Statement from Amanda Sylvia. This is the lady who found him, his body, in the woods. That morning, like every day, I headed to the area in the forest that I always prefer to run. While I was taking a break to drink water, I saw his body laying flat behind the bushes. I immediately informed the police. All I remember is that the person lying on the ground was wearing a suit and had a red rose. We're dealing with a serial killer. The body from three cases ago had a red rose on it too. There's a serial killer afoot. But the question is, is James Redlow the serial killer? I will now go to my evidence tab. I've played enough Among Us to know what I'm doing.
the same evidence we found on that body that was in the trunk. So now I am thinking that James Redlow didn't do it and that we're dealing with a serial killer here. How long was your friendship with Francis? We've been working in the same company for about four years, but we have a close friendship for two years. Was there anyone in the company who did not like Francis or had threatened him recently? No, as far as I know, there is no such person. In fact, he was the CEO of our company and he was well liked by every member of our board team. This is the... So there's a serial killer who's killing CEOs? often go to the bar and question with them? Yes, we used to go at least twice a week and vent. Hmm. <coughs> I'm thinking that James Redlow is innocent and that we are dealing with a serial killer. Because it is the same exact evidence from that body from a couple days ago. Remember, so we're dealing with a serial we're dealing with a serial killer, and I don't think it's James Redlow here. Facts. James Redlow. In the case of the assassinated CEO and your friend. I'm going to sentence you to not guilty. Case closed. What is this? A note passes on my desk. What could it be? That's it! Diamond with the five. Thank you for the pay the pay increase, though. Bro, Chad, this game needs to make the rotation low key, huh? This game's fire, dude. Bro, this game is good. One more. Dude, I'm down to do one more. Yo, sea creatures with the five. We got 700 bucks. Give me my money. One more? Alright, we'll do one more. And then we're playing Dress to Impress after. Hey, Dolores! Can you fart on me? I'm stressed. What? I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Queso court. Mm -hmm. Elden Duncan. Arthur Daryl. Mr. Elden Duncan has a criminal record, chat. He does. Mr. Arthur Daryl does not. Let's see what we're working with. Yo, Tajar with another five. The charges are threat, malicious wounding. The incident occurred in the evening at the home of Eldon Duncan, which is the man with the criminal record. The person named Arthur Daryl, which is the other person, who caused the injury fled immediately after the incident. Oh, so Mr. Arthur Daryl caused an injury to Mr. Eldon Duncan. Mm -hmm. 
An arrest warrant has been issued for Arthur Darrell as a result of the report of the person named Eldon Duncan. Mm -hmm. In the search initiated by the police as a result of the tip-off, it was determined that Arthur Darrell was hiding in his sister's house while and was captured by the police in the evening brought to the police station for questioning. So, long story short, Arthur Darrell uh, um, attempted to hurt this guy. Which you wouldn't think that because he's the one with the criminal record and the guy that hurt him is the guy without the criminal record, right? Here's the statement from Mr. Eldon Duncan, which is the one that was assaulted. A month ago, I borrowed some money from Arthur Darrell. Okay, now it's getting spicy. Okay. A month ago, I borrowed some money from Arthur Darrell. He kept calling me and telling me that my debt was doubled and increasing day by day. I told him many times that I had not yet received payment from my workplace and that I would pay my debt when I received it. Despite this, he never stopped calling and harassing me. And after a while, he started following me home. Although I reported this situation to the police many times, I did not receive a positive response. As I finally left my workplace and arrived at my house, I saw Arthur Darrell behind me. I noticed he was holding a knife in his hand. He pointed the knife at me and asked me to be quiet and go to my apartment with him. I couldn't react because I was afraid. Then we went to my apartment. After entering the house, he started rummaging through my house and looking for money. Huh. When he couldn't find money, he stabbed me in the leg, then quickly fled the apartment. Here's the statement from the assaulter. About a month ago, Eldon Duncan called me and told me that he needed some money. Although I was in a difficult situation myself, I gave him the money he asked for and explained the situation to him. You can't justify this. You can't justify stabbing a guy and rummaging through his house because he ain't got the money yet. <sighs> yes, you can. Okay, you live your life by that motto and go to jail for 20 years. You, you go ahead and do that, buddy. You have fun with that. Like, what you talking about? He said he would pay me the money as soon as possible. Since he did not respond after a month, I couldn't stand it and called him and told him that he had to pay his debt. He told me that he would pay the debt if I came to his house on the date and time that he said. Wait a minute, what? These two stories aren't aligning! When I went to his house, he told me that the money was in his apartment and that, we, and that we should go up to the apartment. When we got home, he asked me to sit down and said he would come back soon. Then he stood in front of me with a knife starting to make threats to me. What? <coughs> I told him that he had to pay his debt no matter what. Then he swung the knife towards me. At that moment, I made a move to defend myself, and the knife was stuck in Eldon's leg. Afterwards, I took the knife and ran to my sister's house because I was afraid. Somebody's lying! Now, who are we going to believe? The guy with the criminal record or the guy with no criminal record? I will go to my evidence tab. What? It's like a 
the lock pick in Minecraft. We got boom, boom. Wait, which one's after this one? It's going boom, 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 right? <laughs> Thank you for the blessing, Jesus Christ, Sean. What? I'm tripping. Wait, wait, I'm tripping. I'm just trying to see the evidence, man. Where do I go after this one? Too easy. are on the knife. Two one two seven two. Oh Mr. Arthur Daryl's fingerprints are on the knife. But according to his story, Mr. Eldon had the knife first. But if Mr. Eldon had the knife first, his fingerprints would be on them too. Not looking good for you. Mr. Arthur, phone call from Arthur. When are you going to give me my money back? Give me some more time, please. I will return as soon as possible. I've waited long enough. I can't wait any longer. If you don't pay by tomorrow at the latest, I'm not responsible for what happens. Calm down, I'm saying I'll pay. If you don't pay by tomorrow, I'll kill you. Mr. Arthur? Not only did you threaten to kill this man, Yo Meridian with the five gifted? Not only did you threaten to kill this man for not paying your money back, you also went into his house and stabbed him in the leg. Law book, I am the law. This is aggravated 
malicious wounding. That's literally what this is. And you know what? There's kidnapping and home evasion on it too. So if you want to, let's add all this up then. Aggravated malicious wounding. He stabbed him in the leg 14 years. Bang! Home invasion. I would say it was a minor home invasion. Two years. Bang! We're looking at 16 years. Kidnapping. Six years for a regular sentence. We're looking at... 22 years! But hold on, I'm not done! I'm gonna throw the book at you, Mr. Arthur! You're gonna learn today! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! We got a threat! Aggravated sentence is four years. Literally saying on the phone, I will kill you. So you know what? That's one tier above aggravated sentence. So I'm going to call it even. You are going to be receiving... Mr. Arthur Darrell. The jury has come to your conclusion. You will be serving... 35 years! Put him in the slammer! Mr. Eldon, you're free to go. Are you crazy? I'm literally not crazy. I added up every single charge he had, and I added three extra years to it because he threatened to kill him. I don't want this psychopath on the streets. I don't want a guy... You can call me L Judge if you want to, but at the end of the day, I'm keeping people safe because I don't want this psychopath running around, and if you, if you borrow money from him, he will bust into your house and stab you in the leg. I don't care. My first instinct was to give him 100 years. You're lucky I didn't. I wanted to give him a hundred. <coughs> you added nine years? Don't care. This dude broke into someone's house and stabbed them in the leg. You were a menace to society. You don't deserve to be out in public. I hope you rot in jail. Straight up. Don't care. Sorry, chat. Do I low key want to do one more, man? One more guaranteed last one that we're getting on dress to impress. Last one and we're getting on dress to impress. This is it right here. Bill passed. Criminals who are not mentally well will be sent for treatment instead of punishment. Not in my courtroom. What you talk about? What if they're claiming, what if they're claiming that they're not mentally well, but they're just putting on a show? So what do I just, do I just not lock them up for that? Howard's Roast. He's probably innocent because his last name is a food. Okay. No criminal record? That is a rough looking 25. Golly, you're 25? You didn't look no younger than 45 when I first saw you. Golly! Okay, no criminal record. Mental health test is positive. Does that mean he's good? Chad, does that mean he's good? Like, positive means good? So he's... All right, bet. Let's see what the charges are, Mr. Howard's Roast. Charges. Willful damage to public property. The 
incident was discovered by citizens using the benches belonging to 10 hour municipality an investigation was launched following complaints cct footage uh oh the cctv footage was examined in detail and the person involved was identified as howard rose so they got him in 4k they got you in 4k mr howard As a solution, a new bench was placed in front of the 10-hour town hall and they started to wait. Howard Rose sat down on a bench at noon, took out a sharp object of his, from his pocket, and he was detained by the police officers at the same time. What was he going to do with that sharp object? Positive, positive means mentally ill? How do you know? Here's a statement from him. Here's his statement. First of all, I didn't know it was a crime to do this. The reason I did it is that I unintentionally picked up a bad habit and it turned into an addiction. I can't control it anymore, but as I said, I didn't know it was a crime to do it. I'm not sure what he, what did he do? What did he do? I thought it had evidence. Did he like scratch up the bench? <coughs> Let's see. So he scratched up the bench with a box cutter, uh, a, what's it called, a chisel or whatever, and a, uh, what looks like a knife. Are they really wasting my time with this case? Chat, where's vandalism? <sighs> Wait, no negative mental health test means they must be sent to treatment. So he's good. He's not mentally ill. So he's not, he's just. You know what's crazy? You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this, but this is exactly what I was going to give him. That's how you know I'm a good judge. I didn't even need to look at this. I was literally going to give him this. I was gonna do a little less though. I was gonna do like a week public service and like a $500 fine. Because think about it, Chad. We're looking at, we're looking at, is this aggravated or just regular? This isn't aggravated, right? Like at the end of the day, he just scratched up a bench. So we're looking at 12 months public service here. Here's what we're going to do. Yo, possum with the 10 gifted. Appreciate you, possum with the 10 gifted. All right. Mr. Howards, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cut you a deal, right? For cases like this, we usually give... We usually give... 
a year of community service. So here's what I'm going to do instead. We're going to do six months community service and we're going to slap on a 4,000. No, 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 no. We're going to slap on a $2,000 fine and you only got to serve half of the public service. That's a good deal. The bench doesn't cost that much, bro. That's not the point. It's the principle of it. Okay? You can't go around scratching up benches, dude. Not to mention I'm pocketing like 20% of that. Six months public service, $500 fine. Wait a minute, I didn't talk to him. Let's assume you didn't know what you did was a crime. Did you also not know that the citizens, it's the citizens who use those benches and seats? Of course I do, Your Honor, but I wasn't thinking about that part of it when I did it. Do you regret doing this? I absolutely regret it and promise to do my best for public peace from now on. Yeah, I think we gave him a fair deal. Six months public service, $500 fine. That's more than fair. Six months is a lot. Yeah, but in the law book, they want to slap 12 months on them. So I cut them a favor by cutting it to six months and making them pay 500 Now, if y'all want to go down that road, we'll take the fine off and just give them a year of public service. Somebody said death penalty, take it or leave it. <laughs> Yo, what? Yo. <laughs> Chat, we giving him death? Chat, I think this is fair. Chat, listen to me right here, right now. I think this is entirely fair. <coughs> this is entirely fair. Entirely fair in my opinion.
That's a scam! W Judge. Chad, is that game making the rotation? Dude, that's fire. Dude, that game is actually fire, bro.